be here with you guys. And the worship service of today, the title is, I want you to know. Well, for our viewers, we want to tell you, uh, we want you to know that we are based in Odessa, Texas, the great state of Texas. And for all of you, we say hello and thank you. We appreciate people that are making comments from different parts of the world, including Australia this week. Whoever you are, my friend, thank you for watching and com making the comment from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you. From Odessa, Texas, to the rest of the world, we say to you, welcome to Victory Church, our worship service number 203, August 16, 2020. If you would like to download the bulletin, you can do it through the website. You go to vchurch.us, and then you look for the tab bulletins and just pick the date, and then you will be able to download the bulletin. Or, if you prefer, if you are watching through a big TV, put your phone there and open the camera. You can use the QR code there and download the bulletin, so you will have it. Also, we want to remind to our viewers that we are looking for $5,000 to renew our equipment here in the church. If you want to help us, please feel free to go to vchurch.us forward slash give or text to 432-268-0007. Very good. I want you to know, August 16, 2020. This is the first scripture that we are going to read this morning. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 16. We read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's do it all together, friends. I have put my words in your mouth and kept you safe in the palm of my hand. I, who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and who say to Zion, you are my people. Let's say all together that last part. You are are my people. Now let's say it. We are his people. We are his people. I want you to know that. We are his people. And that comes from his mouth. His words. He put his words also now in our mouth. He wants us to know that we are his people. The king of the universe is saying to us, you are my people. You are my people. We heard that beautiful song earlier. That was so inspiring. That was powerful. The blessing. Blessed are you in your morning, in your evening, your family, your children are the children. Because that is God's heart. It's the desire of the Lord to bless His people because we are His people. Amen. And we need to embrace that and feel that. And you know, when you are singing a song like that, and you just know it. And you say, yes, I am His. I am His. You know, God wants you to know many, many things. But mainly what He wants you to know is that you are His. You belong to Him. And you need to receive His love and just... Get this feeling of belonging to him and say, I belong to the Lord God. I belong to the Lord God. Now, you know that we all have our relationships. And through the relationships, we have human interaction. And what is what happens through the human interaction? Well, we get hurt. Sadly, it happens. Sometimes people are hurting us and sometimes it's the other way around. Hurt is part of life. I want to talk to you about the hurt for a moment, okay? You know, one of the things that we need to understand is our own feelings. Many people don't want to even think about their feelings. They try to ignore that they have feelings. They don't want to think about it. It's like they don't feel anything. You know, that's impossible. That's impossible, friends. We have feelings. And you need to understand your own feelings. Because sometimes you are upset. And if you don't want to acknowledge that, fine. 
that doesn't change the fact that you are upset. And you are carrying, you are carrying that anger inside of you because you are just refusing to accept that you are going through certain things in your life and you just ignore that, try to cover it. But the truth is, they are there, those feelings. So you need to understand your feelings. And how can you understand your feelings? Well, you need to think, what exactly is what happened to you? What is what happened? What happened to you? Why are you sad today? Why this morning you don't feel so excited that you used to feel? What happened? No, I don't want to think about it. No, wrong. You need to think about it. What is what happened that made you feel that way? Because we try to pretend there are no feelings and we just keep on going. The truth is we cannot keep on going with those feelings inside of us, especially when we pretend they don't exist. It's like imagine you have an illness in one of your organs. There is something that is not working right inside of your body. And you just say, I don't feel anything. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> imagine a tooth with a problem there. No, I can make it. No, you won't. People die out of those things. Your feelings are exactly as important as any other organ in your body. And you need to understand your own feelings. Try to understand what exactly is what happened and how that made you feel. How was the context? Who are the people that are involved in that situation? Because if you are upset or sad or frustrated or whatever it is you are going through, you can't ignore your feelings. They are there. And you know what? God wants to heal you. That is exactly the, the beauty of this relationship we, we have with the good Lord. He knows we have feelings. You know, most of us that are parents, we see our kids. They are around us. We immediately know something is not right. They have the nice shirt, the nice pants, the nice shoes, whatever. They are playing with their phone like usual. But there is something going on, and we just look at the kid, and we just think, something is going on here. And you ask the kid, right? What's going on with you? Is everything okay? Yeah, everything is fine. But you know it. Now, you as a, as a parent, are you happy with that answer? Are you satisfied with that answer? No, you are not. It's not that you are nosy. It's that you care. Right. You love your kid. And seeing your kid going through something is just killing you. And you want to know what's the problem. At least tell me what is the situation. Because if you, as a father, as a mother... See your child going through something. You want to help. Well, hello, God is your father. He wants to help and he can help. But he cannot help you unless you are willing to talk about it. Reflect about it. That is why your prayer time, friends, it is important. Your devotion is important. Take your time. Talk to the Lord. Many people go through situations in life and they are just thinking about it. In the back of their head, they are driving, thinking about it. A lot of images going on. They hear words. They see documents in the screen of their imagination. They see the face of the individual. But they don't want to really think about it. That's a mistake. You need to take your time and reflect what exactly happened. And why that is, is that important? Well, it is important because you need to have closure. When you don't have closure, that thing is still boiling there in, in the stove of your emotions. You have to have closure. You had a problem with somebody, you need to have closure. 
You have a problem with yourself? Well, you need to have closure with yourself. You need to have closure. But especially, my friend, if you are fighting with the Lord for something that happened to you, you need to stop that. Whatever is the situation you are going through, you cannot fight against God. First of all, you are not going to win. You will never win the, any arguments with the good Lord. No one. You won't. You, you will find out that he always is right. He never did anything wrong to anybody. Never has, never will. He's perfect. So you need to stop fighting against God. You know what you need to do? You need to submit yourself to God's authority. That's what you need to do. You need to start accepting that whatever happened, he had a plan, a reason. Things happened. Yes. And just submit yourself to his authority. And you say, Father, I didn't like what happened. I didn't like losing this contract. I didn't like when this person stole these things from me. I didn't like the, the way that this individual mistreated me. I didn't like the way that this person talked to me. But you know what? I... I got I to gotta have closure with this thing, Lord. And I'm not going to blame you, Father, for this. In fact, I'm going to surrender. Because I want to accept your authority in my life. You see that? Because what we need to do is to reconnect with God. That's what we need to do. You need to reconnect with God. And you say, yeah, you're right. I'm going to reconnect. I'm reconnecting with God. No, my friend, I'm talking for real. Not the normal thing that people say, I'm, I'm reconnected. But it's not a real reconnection. It's more like, a, like the phone, you know. You charge the phone. You have a little bit of battery and you keep on going. <laughs> Many people have that kind of relationship with God. You need to keep plugged with the Lord all the time. Reconnect with God for real, for real. Being connected with Him and listening to Him constantly. What is what He wants? Now, I'm going to give you some ideas about what to do in the case that you had a bad experience with somebody. Sometimes we live bad experiences. The first thing that I will recommend you to think about it is how can you prevent that? Because there are many things that happened in our lives and, and we think, that was horrible, but I'm glad it's over. But uh, can you prevent that? Many, many times we can prevent the same story happening to us. We can prevent that. But if you don't take your time... To reflect about that particular bad experience you had with anyone, you know what? More likely you're going to leave that experience again because you have not developed a plan to prevent that situation. Whether it's with contracts, employment, romantic relationships, re just simple relationships with your family. What about relationships in the, relationships in the church? Issues that we have in our money management. Problems that we have with our own health. How can we prevent that? But if you don't want to think about it, you are making a mistake here. You need to think about it and try to create a plan. But sometimes even if we try to prevent, things can happen again. So in that case... What could you do if that potential situation happens again? You need to be prepared, although you are preventing, but in the event that something like that, like that happens again to you, well, how are you going to respond? I hope you understand what I'm saying. You need to be clever in everything you do. You need to be smart. You are his. I want you to know. He loves you. He wants the best for you. 
Now you need to use your brain. You need to use common sense. What is that bad experience that you lived? Think about it. Don't just think, uh, you know, it was, it was another deal, but it's not a big deal. Okay? If you don't want to take your time to evaluate the experience, it's going to happen again. Until you learn the lesson. How you can prevent that, and if it happens again, how will you manage that situation? Very important. Things that I can recommend you if you have a bad experience with somebody is that you need to express your view about that particular experience with whoever was involved. How? Oh. Now, what, I'm a, what I am about to tell you guys is tough stuff for an average person. If you are an average person, you will not get this. You have to be above average to understand what I'm about to say. And it's very hard to implement it because it requires emotional intelligence in doing this. Okay, here we go. You need to express your view about that particular experience with whoever was involved. Okay? So what is the first thing you will find is the least controversial moment to have that conversation. You will find the right time to talk with this person. And you need to do it from your heart. You're going to talk from, from your heart to this individual or individuals. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I, I don't like that. It's too emotional for me, exactly. That's why I told you, it's, it's not for an average person. If you can handle it, like the movie, you remember, you can handle the truth, something like that. <laughs> if you can handle it, well, let's forget about it. And wait there, let me finish this part, and then we will go to with the next part of the, the message. But I hope you can do it. You need to learn to speak from your heart, even if you had a bad experience with somebody. But first of all, find the right moment. Not a controversial moment. Speak from your heart. And try to use very little words. No little words. The least possible words. Do not say in five sentences something that you can say in two. Do not extend that explanation unnecessarily. No. You're going to speak from your heart, but go to the point. And do not push for immediate response. You leave the bad experience with somebody, you're going to talk to this person. When I find the right moment, you're going to speak from your heart with the least possible words, but you are not going to push for immediate response. That is the classic mistake people make. Okay, I told you this now. I want to see. I want to see your reaction. Ask for forgiveness. No, no, no. That, that doesn't work well. You don't need to push for immediate response. But what you need to do is confirm that the third party understands what you are saying. Confirm by asking, do you understand that when you did this and that, it was bad for me? Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. And sometimes it's better to wait for a proper response. You know, sometimes when you speak, express your views about any bad experience with somebody, sometimes that person understands and says, you know, since you mentioned it, I want to talk to you about it. I really feel you are right. That was wrong for me. I want to tell you how I feel about it. But sometimes the person is not willing to even talk about it. Well, give it time. But what you need to do is to tell this person, just so you know, in some point in the future, I would like to talk about this. So it's not just, you did it, that's the way that you made me feel, so that's it. No, 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 it, there is no it yet. There is no it yet. You need to go in the next point, which is what? To have closure. You need to have closure. Whether it is your supervisor, your employee, your supplier, your co-worker, your spouse, your children, 
your friend, whoever. You need to have closure with that particular deal because you don't want to leave that experience again. All right. Remember this, my friends. The Lord already put his words in our mouth, and he says to us, you are my people, so you need to be rest assured that because we are his people, things are going to go well for us. But he is expecting us to use intelligence, wisdom, common sense, and the ability to speak. Now, what about good experiences? Because in life, not everything is bad experiences, correct? Praise God. <laughs> Imagine if everything that we needed to, to live were bad experiences. A bad experience again. Okay, what did I learn here? Another bad experience. What did I learn here? <laughs> My gosh, that would be horrible. No, not all that we live are bad experiences. There are great good experiences, correct? So what is exactly that thing that made it so great to you? What is that thing that made it so great that that experience you lived, you are fascinated with, captivated, so happy? What was it? You know, for those who are in the process of dating, you know, the first kiss, you know? Oh, that was... And what, what, what was uh, so special, that kiss? I don't know. It was the first time that I kissed her lips or his lips, you know, or the experience of purchasing a vehicle, a brand new vehicle. What was it? It was the smell, the smell of the car. I just love that smell of the car, the brand new car. What was that experience? You know, when, when we were singing that song, I don't know, the environment, the, the, the environment was so fantastic what was exactly that thing that made it so great when you live in a, a good experience you need to go back and revisit and think about it because the lord wants you to enjoy mainly good experiences and remember those good experiences so you might be able to share with others it's great to share good experiences with others. Not just bad stuff, friends. You have lived great experiences. You have many great things in your life. You have done great things. You have accomplished things. The Lord has provided for you. The Lord has blessed you with many things. Not everything is bad in your life. There are many wonderful things in your life. Praise God. Well, think about it. And what is exactly what made you feel so great about that experience? Would you like to share that experience with others? You should. You should. That's why this message is titled, I want you to know. Just look at the image of this girl for a second. There are dozens of people there that she might reach if only she is willing to share. Now, do you want to know how to share a good experience? Okay, so here we go. It's very similar. If you want to share a good experience, you're going to speak also from your heart. And you want to reach people's hearts. Whatever is the good experience, my friend, you need to share your experience from your heart. Not just a, a description of the experience. So how was that? Well, you know, the salesperson was okay, and the car runs well, and the, yeah, it has all the, the things that you can imagine in a new vehicle. So I'm happy with that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, really? I can see the excitement. So, how was the service today? It was okay. Okay? No, actually, it was good. Okay. It was good. Yeah. Why? Oh, that, that music was nice. and We had coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I heard that you went to eat with such and such person to such and such place. How was it? Uh, it, was, it was good. It was good. It was a good meal. I ate a lot. 
Man, I ate a lot. <laughs> and what else? Oh, that's it. You need to learn to share good experiences, and you need to do it from your heart. From your heart. Because when you are talking to people, you are talking to people's hearts. I'm not talking to brains here. I'm not talking to minds. Of course, your mind is processing, but I'm reaching to your heart. I want your heart to hear my heart. Because my heart is hearing God's heart. Now, whatever experience you live, you need to share with others how the issue was resolved. Why do you like to use this company? Well, you know what? The, the customer service is great, and they have good communication. They came on time, and you know, this device was messed up, and they did this, and, and it was resolved in a matter of hours. It was fantastic. I really like this company. So, and what happened there? Well, you know, I was so sad because this happened to me, and then they came, these friends came, and, and they were so helpful. I didn't have transportation then, so they, they helped me, bringing me from point A to point B. That's the way that this issue was resolved. Talk about the, how the issue was resolved. Because when you start thinking about how the issue was resolved, you will see new things that you haven't seen yet. You see those things and then you realize, man, that was good. That was really good, actually. And when you are sharing your experience, you need to include your emotions. No, well, I'm a very rational person, you know. Good luck. Imagine those that feel that way, too rational to not express any milligrams of emotions. Two guys, two girls in the car driving to the mountains for a beautiful weekend in a cabin, you know, to see their families, very rational, no emotional. Do you like the scenery? <laughs> it's okay. Man, <laughs> imagine invi inviting these two girls to these two guys to your house to celebrate your birthday. Everybody's like, happy birthday! And they are like, congratulations. <laughs> when you are sharing a good experience, you need to include your emotions, my friend. Yeah. Laugh! You need to, to be free to laugh! Laugh at your stories. Laugh at your experiences. Laugh at what happened. Laugh at yourself. Laugh. Laugh. Smile. Rejoice. Yeah. And if there are sad moments, we'll cry. So what? So what? Only girls cry. No, that's not true. Everybody cries. The Lord Jesus cried. It was a great moment, and you are laughing, and then you realize, boy, it just came to me that I didn't have this and that until these people did this for me, and oh my gosh, and then you cry because you remember how wonderful they were to you, and then you cry. And then you remember the other moment, right? When you were upset about it. And then they did this to me. <laughs> Until finally I received the peace of God. You know, and, and it's okay. I want you to know God has feelings and emotions. We are made at His image. So it's okay. Sometimes we are laughing. Sometimes we are crying. Sometimes we are angry. And sometimes we are just peaceful and relaxed. It's okay. But I want to finish telling you that when it's about your business with the community, certainly you need to learn how to share it. You want a new job? Do you want a better job? Do you want your company moving forward, 
reaching out to more people, touching more and more people. Yes, apply what I just tell, uh, told you about how to share. But remember that in today's world, images are very important. For those who are doing businesses, I highly recommend you review your logos, review your images, add music to whatever you do. And remember, very important, find ways to put in your ads how they can connect with you. It is funny, but you see a lot of advertisement and people are thrilled with the product or service and they say, where do I call? <laughs> there is no phone number in there. What is the website? And the website is triplepoint.org. What? And boom, disappear. When you are sharing your business card with your community and your business card, make sure that they can find ways to connect with you. You are reaching out to somebody because you want a new job. Make sure they get your phone number. Make sure you get their phone number. Now, next Sunday, August 23rd, our worship service 204, the message will be battle. Oh, boy. That will be a warfare message that I would love to share with you. Hope to see you here in the church. But coming back to the scripture that we spoke earlier, in Isaiah 51, 16, the Lord says, I have put my words in your mouth and kept you safe in the palm of my hand. I, who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and who said to Zion, you are my people. The Lord, the King of the universe, says to you, you are my people, so don't be afraid. You are my people. And what, what is that value in knowing that we are his people? Well, because everything that the Lord does is based on love. That's the message from the Bible, that he loves us. If there is one thing that we need to get out of every service, every time we are in the presence of God, is to feel loved by him because that is God God is love I have put my words in your mouth he says and kept you safe in the palm of my hand I who set the heavens in place who laid the foundations of the earth and who say to Zion Zion represents us the people his people you are my people you know he puts his words in our mouth but I want you to see this part, friends. He kept you safe in the palm of his hand. We just lived the experience Friday. One of our church members was involved in a car accident. She might die because of the accident. The car is total. She is damaged, <laughs> seriously, with a lot of problems. But the Lord kept her safe in the palm of his hand. And that happens to all of us. Mike, you lived an accident too recently, a few months ago. Many of us. Yeah. Illnesses like Ronnie, then. But here's the Lord protecting us because we are his people. We are his people. Jesus is the darling of heaven. God is love. Jesus is the darling of heaven. So my friend, would you like today to become a child of God and receive that news, that salvation in your heart so you will be willing to share this message with others? I hope you would. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 declares, If you openly say, Jesus is my Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from death, you will be saved. Maybe that's all that you need today, my friend. Just give your heart to the good Lord. And this is the perfect opportunity. I want you to know, my friend, God is there for you. Connect with Him through a prayer. Say with me, dear God, I need you. Without you, I'm nothing. Without you, I have no hope. I surrender to you, Lord. I open my heart to you, Lord. I confess my sins before you. I need you, Lord. Please forgive me. I need to change. 
I want to obey you and trust you and serve you forever, my Lord. Starting today, I want to see life and people exactly as you do. Please help me, Lord. Say with me, please help me, Lord. And it's here, my friend, on the cross where you find your salvation in the name of Jesus. Say with me, I am forgiven and saved by faith in Jesus. Therefore, I can also declare my life is going to be great and blessed this year 2020. Friends, receive the blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a beautiful weekend. Enjoy your family and friends, and I'll see you next Sunday. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light, anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served, I know, I know, I know, I know. Please remember our fundraiser, $5,000, to buy new equipment to improve our broadcast. Thank you. Thank you for watching Victory Church. Please feel free to contact us. Our email address is info at vchurch.us and our phone number is 432-614-9798.